Hey, what is going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a good start to your day. And in today's video, I have prepared a couple of slides for you and we're not going to be doing any type of coding for today's video. And so what I really want to answer here in today's video is a quick question about what is the most efficient way of learning from all of the videos on this channel here. And the question that I really want to answer is whether or not we should memorize all the code that we type out for these iOS projects. So this question actually came from a user on this channel. His name is Chi Man Song, Song Chi Man. Uh, I've always had this question about what is an efficient method of learning. Uh, would you recommend your followers to repeat what they have learned from this video until being able to recreate your code from memory? So this is a really great question. And I think it's kind of our natural instinct to memorize things that we don't understand. And I believe this comes from, you know, staying in school for all these years and they kind of hammer this concept uh, into our brains. Uh, I don't think it's actually that helpful to memorize code and programs because uh, we're really bad at remembering things in general. However, I think it definitely helps to repeat all these exercises by yourself to sort of test your own understanding as to how you can put together all these pieces to kind of assemble a really, really sophisticated project, especially an iOS project that is pretty, pretty complicated. And so again, the question I want to answer is whether or not it's helpful to memorize all this code that we have inside of our iOS projects. So I'm gonna to turn to Mr. Chameleon here and let's see what he's saying. And he says that don't pretend to be something that you are not and Mr. Chameleon, knows all about trying to adapt and change himself uh, to match its surroundings. However, as much as he tries to change, he's always gonna stay a regular old chameleon. And I want to show you this image here. And humans aren't computers, obviously. And this image down here, for some of you that don't notice already, uh, this is not a human. Uh, this is a robot, it's a computer. It's really good at doing computer things such as memorizing code and remembering things that humans really suck at. And so in general, I think people in society, we all have pretty horrible memories and it's not really our job to, you know, remember everything in our daily lives because we're just really bad at it. Especially when it comes to coding, there's just so many lines of code that we've written and that we've also read in the past. It's virtually impossible to just remember everything correctly. However, we are very good at remembering references uh, such as keywords for things that we are aware of and for things that we understand uh, how to build out. So now what I want to do is to kind of talk about three reasons why I personally don't memorize a whole lot of code. And to be honest, uh, a lot of the code that I present to everyone out there in all of these videos, I probably forget about 95% of the code and you know I don't remember everything myself. So Mr. Cheetah here uh, is telling us to just Google search for code. And this is the most important thing to developers uh, inside of the software industry. Uh, understanding how to search for things based on keywords uh, is a way to kind of improve your process of developing really good code. And Mr. Cheetah over here, uh, he's all about that speed. And as everyone understands, uh, Google searching for code is really, really quick. So. Don't try to memorize everything, just depend on Google to kind of give you that helping hand. And the example that I want to give you here is let's say I am tasked to implement a video player inside of an iOS project as one of the new features, right? Uh, well, if I've never done this before, the first thing I would search for is Swift Play Video, so these three keyword terms. And if I've had done this before, I would just search for AV Player, which is Audio Video Player or search for AV Kit or AV Foundation, which contains you know, all the libraries required to play video inside of iOS project. And so if you go to Google and you try to search for Swift Play Video, the very first query result will kind of tell you the answer for exactly how to implement a video player. So uh, going into that post, you'll see the suggested answer, you'll see all the code here that tells you how to use an AV player, AV player view controller, and how to present it down below somewhere over there. And if you want to present a AV player layer instead, you would just use this code. So I would like to show you the typical process, how I search for things in Google. So let's say I wanted to, you know, Swift play video. 
the first thing that comes up is this post over here. And to be honest, in you know my development career right now, I really don't even read these questions at the top of the post anymore. I typically search for this big green checkbox over there. And then I scroll further down until I see the code that I am kind of interested in. And the moment that I see some of these lines that tell me exactly what class I need to use, uh, I'm pretty much done and I can copy this code and just paste it inside of my project. So the way this really works is I take a look at the main class that I need, which I can typically tell it's this AV player class over here, it takes in a URL for some kind of file and that file requires this path over there and then we use some kind of AV player view controller. And so every time I see two big characters before a class, I know that I have to import something because that's how the frameworks inside of Swift works. You just have to import AV kit or AV foundation to have access to these classes over here. And so if I wanted to do it differently, instead of an AV player view controller, I would scroll further down and then I would find the other answer over here with these seven points. And this is how you add an AV player into a view if you didn't want to use the AV player view controller. Okay, so moving on to the second reason why I don't really recommend memorizing all this code is because I store all of my private projects onto github.com and on this website are all of my repositories that I can reference pretty much anywhere I go. And so no amount of time will erase the memory of a good dog. And so GitHub is like a really, really good dog. It just remembers everything that you upload onto it. And so uh, my repo is pretty huge. Hope you guys aren't jealous of the size of my repo. Uh, there's a ton of projects on there that I use as just excellent reference material. And the reference material allows me to cut down on, you know, the research time I need to Google for things and try to understand how certain libraries work again. So if I ever need to rebuild a certain feature in a future project, I just use the old code that I have and that I know works 100% of the time. And so again, the nice thing about GitHub is that all the code is really, really easily accessible from anywhere in the world that you have the internet. And so every time I start a new job at a new company and I work from their offices, having access to my GitHub repositories is just super, super helpful because it allows me to build out features a lot faster without you know having to do all of this research. So let me show you what my GitHub repository looks like and all of these repositories on the right side, I have about 38 of them. And so you see this really, really long list and uh, every time I need to rebuild something, I just click inside of one of these projects, look at the code, and there you go. I don't have to do research anymore. And so the last reason why I don't memorize a whole lot of code is because I depend heavily on the autocomplete feature of the Xcode editor whenever possible. And so I'm kind of like a dumb elephant where I don't remember all the method names, especially for all the UI kit components. So, you know, for example, UI table view has number of rows, number of sections, cell for row at index path, you know, it just doesn't help a whole lot to memorize all this stuff. So again, uh, I don't really ever recommend that you attempt to memorize any of the UI kit code. Uh, always, always, always let the autocomplete do its magic. And the reason is because Swift is extremely verbose. All these method names are just super, super long doesn't really help a whole lot to memorize all that stuff. And the other thing is that because Swift syntax changes so often and so frequently every year, that once you have a small little change, you have to understand how the new method looks like in the future update. And the last thing I wanna kinda of talk about here is that you'll often be pretty much screwed if you try to type out all of this code yourself, and you'd be surprised how many times I get user comments about methods that don't exist anymore because they're trying to uh, type out all that code themselves. And again, I just wanna reemphasize, let the autocomplete handle all the code for you whenever possible, which is about 99% of the time. And so for example, if you're trying to construct a custom table view controller, let the code completion kind of tell you what the cell for row at method looks like, just hit enter, and accept the recommended code. Okay, 
And you know, if you try to type UI kit code yourself, uh, a polar bear dies. All right, so that's gonna wrap it up for today's video. Please let me know down below whether or not you think it's good to memorize all the code for Swift programming. Uh, one last thing I did want to kind of talk about was Apple documentation, but I know uh, when it comes to taking a look at it for the first couple of times, uh, it tends to be really, really confusing. Okay, so make sure to leave a thumbs up for today's video if you enjoyed it, and also subscribe to the channel for more video like this. That's gonna be it for me today. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.